Number 98. Which of these molecules and ions contain polar bonds, and which of these molecules and ions have a dipole moment? Okay, then we have XEF4. Now I guess we should start with the first thing. They wanted to know if the bonds in XEF4 are polar, or are they nonpolar? Well, remember that if they're asking for bonds, right, they're, they're looking for the single or the double or the triple bonds between two elements. But if I just look at XEF4, uh, I don't see any bonds, right? So the one big suggestion that I could give to you is just pause, take a minute, and just draw out the Lewis structure for this molecule. The Lewis structure is going to unlock a lot of information, especially if they ask for polarity, you know, nonpolar, polar bonds, dipole moments, um, molecular structure, hybridization. So a Lewis structure can tell you a lot of information. So there's a lot of videos on this channel that help you draw the Lewis structure. So if you do need more guidance, you could always go back to those videos where I go step by step. I'm there with you every step of the way. Um, in this case, you could pause the video and see if your Lewis structure matches mine. So we're gonna start. So I put xenon in the middle, X in the middle. There's four fluorines. So maybe one, two, three, and four. I'm just gonna bring this fluorine a little bit closer. And now for fluorine, it needs a single bond. So I have four single bonds. And then each fluorine has six electrons or three pairs to get the octet. And all the fluorines are good to go. And now let's work on the xenon. Xenon has eight valence electrons. It's a noble gas. It used four of them already, one, two, three, four, to make the bond. So it's got four left. So that's two pairs. And there you go. Now I can clearly see the types of bonds. And for each one of them, it seems like it's a fluorine that's a single bond back to the xenon. When you're trying to find out if you have a polar bond or not, you only just need to pull one of the bonds out. It doesn't matter that you have four of them. If they're all the same, you just gotta look at the one of them. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, okay, we have a bond between fluorine, single bound to the xenon. Nobody cares about, you know, how many electrons it has. We're only caring about the bond. Now, if you have a polar bond, that just means that the electrons in this bond is not 50-50 split down the middle. Somebody might, you know, be greedy and pull those electrons more closer toward that atom. And it's always going to be pulled closer towards the more electronegative atom. But if you want a polar bond, you just have to have an electronegativity difference between the two atoms in that bond between 0.4 and 1.8. So we just have to find the electronegativities of fluorine and xenon. Now fluorine is right here. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. It has an electronegativity of 4.0. And xenon, sorry guys, I forgot to put xenon on here. But if we go by our electronegativity rules, xenon should be right next to iodine. And as you go from left to right, you are increasing in electronegativity. So xenon should have a little bit more electronegativity than iodine. And it does. If I look on my periodic table, it's got a 2.6. Now we want to take the difference. That just means subtraction. So Electronegativity differences should always be positive, so always take the higher number and minus the lower number. So 4.0 minus 2.6, I get 1.4, right? That makes sense. And now you say to yourself, is this in the realm of what a polar bond is? And yeah, it's between 0.4 and 1.8, so you definitely have polar bonds. So those electrons in the bond are not evenly split. They are more favored towards fluorine because fluorine is more electronegative. Now we want to find out if the whole molecule as a whole has a dipole moment. Dipole moment is just a fancy way for saying that you have a polar molecule. So instead of looking at the individual bonds, we're just looking at this molecule as a whole. 
And this is where SNAP comes into play, S-N-A-P. If your molecule is completely symmetrical, it is nonpolar. But if you have some type of asymmetry where something is off, that is a polar molecule. And then you would have a dipole moment. But there's one piece of information that's super important that I'm going to tell you guys to make it easier to, to know if you have a polar molecule. Polar molecules where, you know, there's a lot of different types of polar molecules, but if you see that you have a central atom that has lone electrons, so you're looking for those dots. If your central atom has dots, it is automatically polar, no exceptions. So, in this case, my central atom is xenon, and aha, it has four dots. You just have to have one, technically. So this guy's got four. So right off the bat, I don't even care that all these fluorines are the same. They look identical to trick you that maybe you would pick that it's nonpolar. But since the xenon has the lone pairs, it is automatically a polar molecule. And because of that, since it is a polar molecule, it is going to have the dipole moment, an unequal sharing of electrons in that molecule. And now we have answered the question. So this guy's got polar bonds and it's a polar molecule. Uh, so it's got a dipole moment and that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and I look forward to helping you out in more questions. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for being part of the community and keep studying hard. Always keep learning. I believe in you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.